Hello and welcome to our series on demystifying the writing industry, featuring interviews with authors, agents and people within the industry about their various roles, what it's like, their experiences and insights and hopefully lots and lots of valuable tips and advice for you, the author. Today I have been joined by Louis Thill. Louis Still started her career writing carefully researched books about space, ancient Egypt, politics and science, but eventually lapsed into just making stuff up. She likes writing about dragons, wizards, vampires, fairies, monsters and parallel worlds. She lives in London with her wife, her dog, Buffy, brilliant name, and a creepy puppet that is probably cursed. And she is the author of the Dragon in the Library series by Nosy Crow. And she has a new book called Otherland, which is due out on the 6th of May. So, Louis, thank you for joining me today. And we're going to discuss a little bit more about your, your career so far and all of your experiences and advice and tips that you have for our writers. Hi, Louis. Um, it's lovely to have you on um, to chat today a little bit more about, about your writing journey, about the industry and what it's like to, to be a writer and, and what it's been like for you um, yourself over the years. Um, so first of all, just to allow everyone to get to know you a little bit better and to, to know what your writing journey has been like, um, could you give us a little bit about how it started for you? where you first became a writer, where you first started um, submitting your work out to, to agents and so on, and any advice that you might have to give to newer writers who might be at a similar stage? Hmm. Well, I'd say how my writing journey has been is long. <laughs> yeah. So um, I first started writing just after leaving university, which was 20 years ago. Um, I started writing a book that is actually kind of a version of the book that I'm getting published next month. So um, <laughs> there's definitely been a lot of you know, windy bits in the road. Um, I first started sending stuff out probably about five years later. I think it, I actually went on submission to a publisher in 2008. Um, and that was one of those like, annoying, like it got really close, yeah. but not quite. Um, and I think my feeling there was like timing was bad because I had vampires in it and vampires had just, just been and gone, you know? Um, but I think what I realized, I actually gave a talk to some students recently where I was talking about rejection and resilience. But I realized I actually hadn't sent stuff out that much. And I think if I had one bit of advice, it would be just to send send your stuff everywhere and basically like almost have a goal of a, a certain number of rejections. Because I think that's, you know, where you get the useful feedback and you learn, but also you just got that. It's a bit of a numbers game. So the more you send it out there, the more chances you have an ex of an acceptance. Um, so I think I realized I just hadn't actually like I've never submitted a short story to a magazine, say, or entered a competition or I just sort of kept thinking like there's only one way to do this. I've got to do it by an agent and a publisher. And and I wish I'd been a bit more experimental, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think it was all a good learning experience and definitely kind of my writing's improved over those 20 years. Um, but I think so when it came to actually getting published, the first um, book deal I got, I got um, I sort of ended up switching agents and got a book deal in. I want to say 2016, which is um, which was for the Dragon in the Library, but also for my new book Otherland, um, and that was a kind of slightly soul-crushing experience actually, because I had um, I sent out a completely different book. It was a zombie YA, um, and it was about you know monster hunting and stuff. And I was very like, yeah, this is the book. This is the book. Sent it out. Everyone rejected it. Basically, it turns out YA with no romance is not a thing. <laughs> Um, so I was learning some sort of genre lessons there. Um, and, but Nosy Crow was like, we don't actually publish YA, um, but we really like the writing style. So what else you got? So I had to go away and kind of basically come back with a bunch of pitches. Um, and one of those pitches was actually like a version of what became Otherland. Um, but it had different characters, um, similar plot, but like the central characters were completely different. Um, and they they liked a few of the pictures, so they liked the Dragon in the Library, and they said like let's let's make that a series. Um, so that was for seven to nine year olds, and then um, 
other land which was i think initially it's gone through so many titles i can't remember but i think when i pitched it it was called midsummer night's scream um and then it was called the cloak kingdoms and then it was called night game um and then other land eventually which is definitely what its title is going to be yeah. now um so yeah i've definitely had like a complicated i guess my first book deal was sort of a bit of a rejection at the same time um and then after that, my next one was like the complete opposite experience. It was really fast. It was, you know, like auction stuff. So I've definitely seen both sides and, and I prefer the auction thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. So yeah, the main, main piece of advice for those starting out is uh, get your work out there. Um, don't be afraid, don't yeah. be afraid to, to put it into every opportunity that's available. Yeah, and don't think there's one right, right way of doing anything because I know people who've got book deals so many different ways. Um, and through like random coincidences, you know, kind of going to a speaker event and getting chatting to someone who happens to be an agent or all those things where, you know, like you can come across, I mean, I, I didn't do that myself, but I know people who've definitely done that sort of thing or like randomly submitted something to a publisher and then actually they've come out with something completely different, you know, so they might like you submit a picture book and actually end up with a middle grade novel. So yeah. Um, Things are chaotic. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. No, that's really, really good advice. Um, and and actually leads quite nicely on to what I was going to ask you about next, which is um, about writing as as a career. Um, and obviously, I, I, I'm a mm. school teacher myself with my, my profession. And one of the big things we focus on is continual professional development. So you don't just become a teacher and then stop learning. Um, and yeah. I'd imagine it would be the same for, for a, a published author. You don't just become published and then stop learning about your craft and um, so, so no yeah what, what what do you do you know how in what ways have you tried to continue to to develop and learn your writing craft so I, I was actually recently looking around to see if there are any like courses aimed at professional writers and there aren't many really but there's there's ones that are kind of pitched at different levels um but I think one thing I found is the best the best learning tool is a writing a lot and then working out what works and what doesn't and you kind of get a feel for your own style I guess it's not just style but like you know the kinds of books that really are the only you know only you could do those kinds of books because mm -hmm. I think I spent a lot of time figuring out what sort of I, I thought like oh, I should do what books other people want um you know the marketable books the books that are going to get published and actually I think I'm not very good at doing that <laughs> so I'm not very good at second guessing what someone else wants but if I can just do my own thing eventually that's that's the way so I guess there's experimentation there's reading a lot because while I'm saying ignore the market you also got to know the market because you've got to know what else people have done and also learn from people so there's definitely a lot of writers I really admire and I want to learn from them um, even if they're nothing like my style I just know that there's something about what they do the kind of the way they handle character the way they handle plot that is something I can kind of study and um, I guess I'm a bit of a cliche in that I did do an English literature degree <laughs> um, but I do like the idea of like basically trying to analyze a text and say like why does this work um what can i do in my own style that's like this you know like i don't know people talk a lot about those kind of like three act or four act structures but you know that doesn't necessarily work for everyone but i, I quite like that but also so i'd i've done the odd thing where i've got someone else's novel and broken it down into a four act structure myself um and then and i put away all that stuff away and it's not like i'm sitting there kind of going oh well so and so used this and I must copy this but it just I think it goes into your brain and sort of ferments a bit so it's that kind of fermentation process and then also I think the more you do stuff the more fussy you get with yourself and you you think I've always got to level up so it's I think it's partly a sort of a byproduct of never being satisfied yeah. um my wife actually sings the Hamilton song at me which is like you will never be sad as well um but that is my that is my writing yeah. life <laughs> um so yeah, I think it's sort of a little bit about being antsy and never quite pleased with what we've got. Yeah, I mean, and that, and that's great because uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, reading other people's work is is absolutely for me as well. That's one of the, the, the very best ways for me to to learn and develop my own craft as well. Um, mm. Yeah, and and as you say, like output and productivity. I know that a lot of writers talk about how they do things like morning pages, and you know, they they just, they mm. just write things not not necessarily for publication just to sort of work on you know experiment with the writing and 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 that's really good advice from you when you said that about um not been not yeah. been afraid to experiment and, and do different things 
Yeah, and I think like always and trying new forms. I mean, some people will always write in one genre, one form, one age group, and that's fine. But for me personally, I like experimenting. So I'm like, I'm writing a couple of picture books at the moment. Even if they never get published, I just want to try and you know, um, bit of nonfiction here, bit of this, bit of that. I think YA is probably the only thing I won't touch now. But um, uh, it's too much romance. I can't handle yeah. it. <laughs> I'm too repressed. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Um. So. Moving on then, so you, you've obviously, you know, you, you've been very successful over the last few years in terms of, you know, you, you've got a few books out now, um, and but it was a long road for you to, to get to that stage. Mm. Um, and for a lot of people, they're in a similar boat where they've been writing for five, ten years and so on, and they're still mm. sort of looking to sign with an agent and so on. Um, do you have any sort of advice or tips that you could give to writers who are in that position and who are still waiting? I would definitely say like find other people in the same boat as you um because I had um when I went on submission that ended up getting my nosy crow deal um I had a submission buddy um who we were actually like similar ages have been you know like she hadn't been writing as long but you know we were kind of in a similar life stage I guess um and it's just having that solidarity it's so important because you can kind of get so up in your head I think it's like so much of the challenge isn't about the writing it's about the psychological side and the kind of um, not trying to compare yourself to the 20 year old writer who's got the million pound deal yeah, yeah. which you know I'm, I'm not saying I never do that but it's I think having someone else to kind of bring you back down to earth and talk you down is really good um, and I just I mean that's I've always just found people on social media for that it's not like I've got anyone in my life that writes in yeah. that way it's just hello internet be my friend <laughs> yeah I'm very I'm very um, similar actually um, I don't I don't have anyone mm. in my life but yeah like so there's so many people out there who are in the same position so yeah, that's, that's really good mm. advice just to, to try and find others. And, and I know, like, um, I mean, I'm probably overly trusting, but I do generally feel like people have been very kind and very generous with their time and, like, people will read your stuff. And, um, like, I've never had a crit partner as such, but I've definitely had people who, you know, have now become very good friends in, in real life, if that makes any distinction. Um, but, like, who started off as internet friends, who, you know, will read each other's manuscripts, will give each other little, not really crits, but just kind of, almost like cheerleading really it's they don't have to necessarily be there to push you sometimes they can be there to tell you you're amazing yeah. and sometimes that's all you need yeah absolutely um so uh, let's talk a little bit more about about you as a published author then so um you've hmm. got your dragon library series which um has has now concluded is that right yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Although, um, so it's, tr it's trilogy. Yeah. Although I remember chatting to you at one point and you said well maybe there might be something at some point in the future and so on well, yeah, yeah. Could be. <laughs> but for the moment I feel like it feels complete yeah. however the not to give anything away but like the ending opens it up to more different stories yes. and, 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 that, and that's always that's always good for a reader as well I think to have hope that you know mm. even something which has come to a conclusion could could well be picked up again um yeah definitely but what I was wanting to to discuss in a bit more detail was your experience after you signed those publishing deals so um there's a lot written about people getting agents and even people getting deals mm. but then you know the, the period that comes afterwards um you know through your debut year through um you know having to do launches maybe you know virtual launches as it's been recently um, mm. you know the real highs and lows of what comes after I think that'd be really interesting for people to know yeah. about well I've got a top tip is don't launch a book in a pandemic <laughs> But um, luckily, my first book came out before the plague. Yeah. So I was kind of I was I was actually lucky because it was literally the year before. So that was 2019. Um, and so I was able to have a normal launch. And so basically, the first thing that happens after you sign a you don't get the contract for ages, like you'll be like, you've got a book deal, by the way, don't tell anyone and there's no paperwork for a really long time. So like, there's a lot of that kind of anxious waiting, even though you think, oh, well, you know, waiting for the book deal is the waiting. It's like, no, there's, there's always more waiting. And I think just kind of pacing yourself for that's quite important and I can't remember it was quite a long time before we could announce as well and that's pretty standard because they tend to want to announce when you know when they've got a manuscript that's ready because then they could sell it on if they've got world rights for instance they could sell it to foreign publishers um every publisher is different like that but generally you, you might even you know you might wait a year to announce obviously you tell your mates and yeah. stuff but you're kind of sitting on the news um, and then it's a bit longer before you actually publish it. So it was kind of, I think, I can't remember, if, I think the deal was 2016 and then it was published in 2019. And I think announced around 2017, maybe. Um, so there's definitely all these stages. And then when you actually get to publication day, having a launch was lovely. I mean, basically the launch isn't really part of the marketing strategy as such. It's just a lovely party for your friends that, you know, 
the publisher finds you a bit of booze for or whatever you want yeah. you know um I say whatever you want I mean as in like whatever you want yeah within reason <laughs> um yeah so I was just having a conversation about how booze centric a lot of publishing is and how like publishing launches need to have more non-alcoholic drinks and how we should have coffee and tea and I think that'd be amazing yeah. um so that's that's my new campaign <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so the, the launch is lovely and very kind of heartwarming and stuff but the the kind of the bit after the launch is when you go and normally do like school events um so I did a bit of a mini tour around the north of England my parents from Liverpool so I always wanted to do it kind of around the area um so went to like a school in Liverpool and then went up to the Lake District um which again was really really lovely and kind of picturesque and doing and I think it's I'm from London so seeing schools outside of London realizing how different they are um and just kind of nice to see that I mean like we literally had did an event in the outside like under some trees because <laughs> it's just all this like open space and stuff um but the um yeah the tour thing is like it's I mean it depends how much of an extrovert you are I am and I love it um but it's still really tiring I'd say because it's that like um basically it's like I'm quite an anxious traveler because I'm always losing stuff so it's kind of like oh god am I going to make this train have I got my bag um but um but then the events and just seeing children actually respond to your work is really amazing so that's all really really interesting and um, thanks for sharing that with us um and I was just wondering as well is there anything that as a result of this process that maybe you would want to share with your younger self to sort of give them some advice or a heads up about how the process goes I think it would probably be don't take the publishing industry so seriously they're a bunch of children <laughs> <laughs> having worked in, in publishing for 15 years now I think on the you know not not as a fiction person but on, a, on the non-fiction and picture book side um I definitely realized like I thought it was so structured from the outside I thought it was like this kind of amazing castle full of genius and like while well, all the people are very clever and very competent it's a very old industry so a lot of things don't really make any sense and it's not that you're being you know slow in not understanding them they don't make any sense like things just kind of happen in the way they happen because they've happened like that for so long and different publishers all work in different ways but generally I feel there's a lot of kind of I guess habits really and it just you know things like book fairs that don't really make any sense but um like which I think the pandemic's been an interesting way of kind of realizing that like why are we flying half our staff all over the world when we could actually just have a Zoom call? And I'm sure, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that all settles down. Anyway, so yeah, basically, I guess the publishing industry needs you as much as you need them. Like they, they need new stories. Um, they're actually really keen to hear from you. And while it may not seem like that when you get a lot of silence or a lot of rejections, they're actually, it's just about them finding the right thing for the right time. And I think that timing piece is so important because the same book, I wrote 20 years ago basically um has now found its moment um but it, it wasn't then you know and I think that that's a kind of interesting one because you you know you're operating within a market within capitalism within you know trends in the broader sense of like cultural trends um so you might just be you know too early for a cultural trend say and then and then you hit it later on um or just too early for the right editor because I think it is such a personal connection between an editor and a book and they'll they've got to love it and they've got to understand it as well um because I think you know the same editor can think a book's good for different reasons mm -hmm. but if the person that thinks it's good for a reason that's different to yours that would actually be really hard and I don't think it would make the best product because you'd be like pulling in opposite directions and I've, I've definitely seen that happen yeah so yeah basically don't don't worry about having to wait for a bit and also yeah don't be scared because they're scared too yeah no, that's brilliant, and and I'm sure like uh, Louis from ten years ago would 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 appreciate that advice, and and obviously the, I think so, yeah. yeah, and obviously all the the writers as well who are watching this, um, and maybe mm. have had a long you know journey and are, are, yeah. are still trying at book four, five, even six, seven or eight. Um, yeah, that that's that's really comforting to hear. You know, you saying yeah. that because um, I definitely say my book, the first book that Bob published was, I think this fifth or sixth book I'd written um and then obviously Otherlands the first one I wrote but it's kind of done in the wrong order and and actually doesn't isn't really anything like the first draft anyway so yeah um no that's brilliant yeah. thanks it's... so much for for sharing that that's uh, that will give a lot of comfort to to a lot of writers good <laughs> um and uh the last thing we're going to discuss today is is what comes next then so you've obviously you you've got an agent you've got your book deal 
you've survived you know the first book and, and so on um, and, and you actually wrote that first book into a series so now that you're beyond that you know and I, and and my question I sent to you I talked a little bit about you know the enterprise going into unknown territory um mm. and, and that's what it probably feels like for for a lot of people but um can can you give us a bit of an insight into what's next for you what you hope to try and do now what a what a building a career as an author might look like um and the various parts involved so sometimes i think it can really look like doing more of the same so that's actually going back to a piece of advice i give starting out is like if you're doing a book now make sure you're willing to do 10 books like it because publishers will probably ask for more of the same yeah. um however i didn't go in that direction um so my first book was for seven to nine year olds and then i did a middle grade that was kind of a fan you know funny fantasy which is other land um and now i'm doing an author illustrator project um about the norse god loki um which actually i wasn't pitching as an author illustrator i'd done some drawings but i didn't think anyone would buy them yeah. so <laughs> i um i just pitched it as a as a text with you know saying oh here's how i'd illustrate it um and actually the editor that i you know went, the publisher and the editor i went with in the end was the one that said well why don't you draw it um so i think that kind of i'm definitely always seeking novelty so it's it's quite a scary thing to do something completely different i've never illustrated a book before i've only ever done like web comics and single you know single panels and stuff um so yeah i think basically it's i don't think it's necessarily the most logical way to build a career but it's what i've done <laughs> yeah um, um and, and and what and what what do you what would you like to be doing sort of in five or ten years and so on how would you like your your career to look would you, would you like it to be a, a mix and match like that or is there anything yeah. you, know, you particularly want to focus on i think very mixed because i like reading a mix of things and i have a very short attention span so i definitely you know, i've got an adult one i'm working on definitely want to do some picture books um because i've um my my wife reads picture books to her three-year-old four-year-old three-year-old I can't remember. <laughs> Don't tell her. Um, niece over over Skype, over Zoom. And I really enjoy that kind of process of like, you know, writing stuff for quite young children where you can just be completely silly. Um, so I think, yeah, variety is probably the way I want to keep on going. But it slightly depends who gives me money to do what as well, because, yeah. you know, there's follow your heart and there's also trying to make a living. Because I <laughs> yeah. just went free full time as, a, as an author at Christmas um, after working publishing for 15 years um so there is an element of like the practical of you know and i think there's things like doing events where you can obviously you know get paid for that and um all kinds of interesting kind of consulting work and stuff so it's definitely not just sitting there writing books but but ideally i think i want to be writing books you know 75 percent of the time and then the rest of it is doing events and doing other bits and bobs yeah um and and i think you know i think that idea of like don't give up the day job isn't obviously essential but it's definitely one that's worth thinking of people go through their entire career without giving up the day job and that's fine you know and i think the only reason not the only reason but one of the reasons i sort of went full-time was the pandemic and it made me realize because i'd always put off just writing because i thought i would be lonely and actually i haven't been it's been fine like because i can still see people it's just you know um i don't actually have to have them in the same office as me at the same time and i think i'd, I'd kind of got into my head that like if you're not working with other people you're lonely and yeah. And it hasn't been that case at all so um but yeah i think that kind of i like to stay quite open about what i'm going to plan and because i don't really think that far ahead anyway so it's you know i know what the next year looks like because of the contracts i've got um or well, next two years yeah. but then after that you know <laughs> that's brilliant and it, and it must be it must be nice to be able to commit all your energy and all your time into you know your creative pursuits like that um without mm. without having to sort of put them to the side nine till five Monday till Friday sort of thing yeah and I think like I'm not saying I'd never go back to an in-house job again because I might and the right job might come up and that's you know who knows um but I think at the moment it's it's really good because partly because I'm doing this author illustrator thing it is so intense because it's like normally I'll finish the text and then I hand it over and you know with the dragon and library books David took over and I didn't have to do anything apart from say that's nice yeah. um so it's like oh yeah I, I have to keep working on it till the end because I'm <laughs> I'm both <laughs> yeah um so it's definitely it is a bit more of a full-time job than just writing would be yeah I'm really excited actually about that. I mean I absolutely adore the character of Loki so I'm, I'm really excited about those ones coming out 
Um, okay, so uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but you can see my mug from a distance, and that's Loki. Right, that's all you're seeing. <laughs> I'll, when, when I'm when I'm editing, I'll pause that just to get a good, <laughs> to get a good look. No. <laughs> um, okay, and and just lastly, then there's just one more thing I was wanting to ask um, before we finish today. Um, is there anything about the the sort of author career so far that um, you didn't expect, or you know something that has has come up and you thought, oh, I didn't expect that to be such a, a big thing. Hmm. I think I didn't expect titles to be so hard because, <laughs> um, like, there's so much discussion back and forth, um, like, and so many people that have so many opinions. So that's definitely been a like, wow. I th I thought that was the easy bit, but actually, it's really not. Um, but also, I think I don't think I thought quite how much I'd like the editing process because I actually like I mean, I've never been very precious, but generally I feel like um, when I was first starting out, I found editing very hard because I couldn't get that distance. But I think the longer you do it for, the easier it gets. Not that it's ever easy, but that it's easier to step back. Yeah. And I think actually that idea of seeing your first draft as just clay and then and that's what you make the sculpture out of. It's not it's not a sculpture yet. And I think that's been quite a a useful mental shift and and a surprise in in the kind of it just meant I was thinking about things in a different way that I hadn't anticipated at first. Yeah, brilliant, and and, and that's that's really useful advice as well from someone who is not um, particularly brilliant when it comes to editing as well. Um, <laughs> so thanks very much for for speaking with me today. Um, some amazing insights. Um, the the authors who watch this are, are going to have so much material um, and experience and. Uh, stories to to hear from you which which will hopefully inspire them to help them continue going go over the you know the tougher times and know a mm. little bit more about what's involved at the other side and um, should we should we mm. make it that far so um thanks very much for for joining me today Lou. oh pleasure thank you for the great questions